The movie began by showing a woman riding a motorbike while holding a baby. She avoided someone with a car chasing after her. After successfully escaping, the red-haired woman stopped at an orphanage. She put the baby girl in front of the orphanage and left. Soon, two orphanage caretakers came and took the baby. They found a letter that the woman had left. It mentioned the baby's name, Ayatsuru. The letter also stated that the woman would return to take the baby after escaping the pursuit of her enemy. The younger orphanage caretaker thought Ayatsuru was the daughter of a witch, but the head of the orphanage didn't believe in the witch's world. The two caretakers brought Ayatsuru into the orphanage. The head of the orphanage didn't like the name Ayatsuru which means controlling people. The caretaker changed the baby's name to Aya. After several years had passed, Aya grew up to be a beautiful and active girl. Everyone at the orphanage loved her very much. Although active, Aya was very kind and always made her friends smile. One night, Aya and her orphanage friends held a cosplay game of being ghosts by covering their bodies with white cloth. They were playing in a cemetery not far from the orphanage. Soon, there was an old man who passed by with his dog. The dog continued to bark when they arrived at the cemetery's door. The old man looked at the cemetery. He thought that Aya and her friends, who were cosplaying as ghosts, were real ghosts roaming around. He immediately ran away out of fear. Once satisfied playing in the cemetery area, Aya and her best friend, Custard, entered a building not far from there. They climbed the stairs up to the top. Up there, Aya and Custard talked about their future, the people who would adopt them, and what they would do after adoption. The following morning, the head of the orphanage came in haste to hear a report from the old Jenkins, their neighbor. He said there was a ghost in the cemetery near their orphanage last night. He also asked the orphanage guard whether the children were dressed like ghosts yesterday evening. But the guard didn't know. Aya and Custard, who saw the orphanage head confused, approached her. Aya told Custard to go upstairs while she was explaining that she was the one who became the ghost in the graveyard. Aya explained that she did that because she did not want to part with the orphanage's head. She knew one of them today would be adopted. Therefore, she had a farewell party with her friends. Hearing that, the orphanage's head didn't scold her. She instead hugged her and said that Aya was a good kid and asked her to keep it from others. After speaking with the orphanage head, Aya did her usual activities. She greeted her friends and the chef who was cooking. Soon, two people wanted to adopt one of the children. The orphanage head ordered Aya and her friends to stand in line. Then the two people, Mandrake and Bella, entered the room. Their appearance looked suspicious, making the children afraid. They were interested in Aya. The orphanage head explained that Aya had been living in there since baby. Even though Aya had put an evil face on, they kept choosing her for adoption. Even though she didn't want to go, she couldn't argue and followed the two people. Seeing Aya sadly, the orphanage head comforted her by saying that when Aya goes to school later, she will meet again with Custard and her friends. Reluctantly, Aya went into her room to pack up. While packing her things, Aya saw an envelope containing a tape that read Earwick. She was getting ready to leave after packing up. Everyone at the orphanage was so sad when she left. The orphanage had even shed tears as Aya stepped away from the orphanage. Aya was determined not to escape if she felt uncomfortable in her new home and returned to the orphanage. Aya continued to follow the two people walking to a house with a classic and unique style. Seeing her modest new home, Aya was excited because she could escape easily whenever she wanted. From that day on, Aya officially lived with Mandrake and Bella. Aya followed them into the house. Bella explained some rules that Aya had to obey while living there. Bella then told Aya she was a witch. She adopted Aya because she needed her help. She warned Aya not to bother Mandrake, let alone make him angry. Aya agreed to the terms as long as Bella was willing to teach her magic. In exchange for learning magic, Aya volunteered to be Bella's assistant, and they both agreed. After placing her luggage and changing clothes, Aya did her first task. Aya followed Bella to a room she usually used to make magic potions. There Aya saw all kinds of strange objects and materials. Her first job was to smooth the rat's bones using a fist tool. A black cat, Thomas, helps Bella make the potion inside the room. The phone suddenly rang in the middle of her activity, creating a potion, and Bella went to pick it up. When Bella wasn't around, Aya accidentally looked at the magic potion book on the table. Aya read the contents of the potion book. Since she did not understand what the book meant, she put it back. After helping Bella make the magic potion, Aya went to the dining room to have a meal with Mandrake and Bella. There were pie and fries on the dining table, but Bella didn't seem to like the pie very much. Bella, who complained, makes Mandrake angry because pie is his favorite food. Then Aya lightened the mood by saying the pie was her favorite food. They started eating. After the meal, Aya went to the bathroom to wash up and get ready for bed. When she was going to her room, she accidentally saw Bella enter a room. Aya, who was curious, followed her, but suddenly, the door of the room Bella entered disappeared. Aya was confused, and she checked the other room. She entered a room filled with books. There Aya saw a novel written by Mandrake. In the room, Aya was disturbed by Mandrake's little demon, which scared her and left. After leaving the room, Aya was still not satisfied. 
She explored the other rooms in the house. She opened the other door and entered a very spacious but dark room. Aya saw a car with many cassettes of Earwig's music collection inside. Aya took the cassette and the radio and returned to her room. Coming out of there, she noticed that the house's front door was missing. Aya realized that she could not get out of the house. She entered the room and tried to open the window, but it was tough. Aya, who realized she was trapped inside the house, was very upset. Then she looked at the earwig cassette on her bed. The following morning, Bella woke her up, and they prepared breakfast together. Bella said that the cooking task would later be handed over to Aya. She told Aya that she had to be a good girl. Otherwise, Bella would have given her a terrible blue curly worm. Aya was ordered to pick up materials in the backyard. There Aya looked at the door to the yard, but Bella warned her that she won't be able to get out of the house because Mandrake's demons guarded it. Hearing that, Aya was determined to take Mandrake's heart to control it. After that, she started making magic potions with Bella. Aya always paid attention to every way Bella made the potion. After finishing helping Bella, Aya went to the bathroom to wash up. While walking there, she accidentally saw Mandrake giving orders to his demon. Aya was amazed by Mandrake's abilities and hoped she would one day be able to control the demon. After taking a shower, Aya went to her room. She missed the orphanage so much, hoping she would see Custard again one day. Getting bored, Aya spun the tape she found in the car. Soon Thomas came to her room to accompany her. She was so happy to see Thomas go for her, and they listened to music together. The following day, Aya helped Bella to make another magic potion. She was ordered to count the ingredients, starting from the spring lizard to the salt grain. Aya had refused by saying she was nearsighted. But Bella said that it would be impossible to count those small objects if she was nearsighted. Unable to stand it, Aya got angry with Bella. She said that she was not Bella's slave, and based on the agreement, Aya should have been Bella's assistant and should teach her magic. Then Bella threatened Aya that she would get the worm if she didn't do her job. Eventually, Aya was forced to do Bella's work with annoyance. In the evening, Aya was still angry with her work. She expressed her emotions by drawing Mandrake on paper while listening to Earwig's music. When she was busy drawing, suddenly, there was a pair of eyes appeared on the wall. Aya was surprised and asked what had happened. Suddenly Thomas spoke. He said the pair of eyes came from Mandrake's room behind the wall. Learning that Thomas could talk, Aya was even more shocked than when she saw that pair of eyes. Then she asked how it got behind the wall to become Mandrake's room. As far as she knew, behind her room was the bathroom. Thomas then replied that it was part of Mandrake's demonic powers. He advised Aya to stop drawing because it would only upset Mandrake. Aya immediately hid a picture of Mandrake under her pillow. Then she asked Thomas again if he knew about the spell. He replied that he knew more spells than Aya. Thomas then said the spell Aya desperately wanted might have been in the backyard of the magic potion book that Aya had once seen. They rushed to the room Bella often used to make magic potions. Aya and Thomas looked for the magic potion to keep the body from all kinds of magic. After finding it, Aya realized that to be able to make the potion, it took a lot of ingredients, even hundreds. But thanks to Thomas' help, that night, they were able to make the magic potion. Once it was done, Aya and Thomas applied it to their bodies, hoping they would both be immune to magic. Aya was very exhausted after making the potion and immediately fell asleep. Due to lack of sleep, she was staggering in the morning. That day, Aya was exhausted. Bella ordered her to pick up the ingredients in the backyard even though it was raining. She remained patient to pick up the material, even though she had to go back and forth several times. But she protested Bella's unfairness. Bella instead said the only reason she adopted her was that she lacked hands. Aya was upset and planned to prank Bella. Then she asked Thomas if there was a magic spell that could give someone an extra hand. One day, Bella had to go out to deliver her potion order. Before leaving, she told Aya to clean up the magic potion room. Aya took advantage of the situation to create a witch puppet to prank Bella, but she had trouble finding the last ingredient for her doll, Bella's hair. While Aya was busy making a puppet, Mandrake came to bring her a cake. After finishing delivering the order, Bella went home. Aya immediately ran to her room to hide the witch doll. While Aya was cleaning the potion's room, she wondered how to get Bella's hair. Bella's bedroom door was missing, so she could not get into her room. Thinking about it, Aya went to her room for lunch. While eating, Aya was curious about the room used by Mandrake, and she tried to knock on the wall. Then she took a screwdriver to cut through the room's wall. Aya then looked at Mandrake's room from the hole she'd made. As she peered, she saw Mandrake playing piano surrounded by his little demons. Soon, there was smoke that led her to make her dodge. She then closed the hole again using a screwdriver. Aya was still curious, so she went to see the bathroom next to her room. There, she saw her screwdriver pass through the wall. While in the bathroom, Aya was determined to make Bella teach her magic. After the shower, she went to her room and accidentally saw Bella's hat hanging. She immediately picked it up to see if Bella's hair was left there. It turned out that some of Bella's hair was left there. Aya took the hair and put it on the puppet she had made. It turned out that the spell managed to grow Bella's hands, feet, and head. 
those hands were starting to bother Bella. The hand on Bella's leg pinched her while the hand on her head pulled Bella's nose. Aya, who saw it, laughed out loud and said she had given her an extra hand. Bella was outraged. She locked Aya in her room and sent a blue worm. Thomas, who saw the worm got scared and hid behind Aya's blanket. But nothing happened to Aya because the worm did not cut off her body and only gathered on the floor of her room. She wanted to know if the magic she created yesterday with Thomas worked. Aya then took the worm and put it in her hole. She hoped that the worm would go into the bathroom. But it turned out that the worm went into Mandrake's room. Suddenly, Mandrake appeared so angry that his entire body was spitting fire. Mandrake thought the worm was from Bella. He went to see Bella, who was frightened. She went to Aya's room, intending to blame her, but Mandrake scolded them both. When Mandrake scolded them, they suddenly heard the earwig music that Aya often listened to. The music came from a band Mandrake and Bella used to make. Mandrake was silent for a moment, recalling his past. Aya took the opportunity to run into Mandrake's room using the dimensional door. There Aya saw Mandrake's poster and another member of his band called Earwig. Then Mandrake came to his room, following Aya. Aya said she really liked the music from the Mandrake band. She also asked who the beautiful red-haired woman was. He replied he was the one who left her and Bella. Then Mandrake took Aya out of his room. After that, Aya went to Bella and brought Thomas to apologize for bothering her. She then told Bella that she really liked their band. Hearing that, Bella also forgave Aya. Six months passed, and the situation of the house had become very different. Now Aya was treated better than she used to be. They treated her as their own daughter. They pampered and loved Aya very much. Even though Aya's room became more spacious and beautiful, the three of them also often went out together. Aya also could control Mandrake's little demons. On Christmas Eve, Aya invited Custard to visit her house. When she opened the door, Aya was very surprised because Custard and a beautiful red-haired woman had come. The woman said Merry Christmas Aya Tsuru, and the movie ended. The moral that can be learned from this movie is that we have to love children whose cheerfulness creates a lovely atmosphere and softens the heart. The smiles and laughter of children make those around them feel happy.